last talk now. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Keenan Mohammed. Keenan is a neurologist like uh, Ash, Johannes Klein and myself. Um, he's just um, become a consultant neurologist and unusually is going to spend some time actually working with a spin out that I mentioned earlier on a smartphone app, but also really to make improved improvements significantly to the care of people living with Parkinson's and dementia. So we're here now about you, your, the company New Health. Thank you very much, Michelle. Hopefully you can all hear me. Yes. Excellent, good. Um, so I think I'm the last talk of the day, and I think that's actually quite fitting given um, all the excellent talks you've heard about the great research that's done at OPDC and Oxford University. And what I'm now going to talk about is what can happen when that research is translated into the real world environment to try and maximise the impact that it can actually have. And that's what New Health is. So New Health, is, as Michelle has mentioned, is a spin-out from the University of Oxford. And this is kind of the, the tagline, so because it is a spin-out, we do have to, to give you taglines. Um, so we're making the latest Parkinson's and dementia care accessible for all, and I'll go into a bit more detail as to what that actually means. So for those that don't know what a spin-out is, because it's not very familiar to, to everyone, a spin-out is, is effectively a company that's formed on the back of the academic research uh, that was done within the university. The reason that spin-outs actually uh, occur is because they're very fast-paced and dynamic environments that allow a lot of this research to then quickly get into the hands of patients. Um, and that's not always very easy to do from an academic side. How this process works, so this was um, quite a lot of work over the last sort of year and a half of speaking with lots of different people across different departments, so uh, based on the work from OPDC, uh, Nuffield Department of Clinical Neurosciences, um, and OUI in Oxford. Um, we had a lot of discussions about how do you translate that work then as a, into a spin-out. So we were successful in speaking with Oxford Science Enterprises, which is a venture capital arm of the university. And after many Dragon's Den style pitches to them, we were successful in raising some funding to create the spin-out. And that's what New Health is. But it's not a case that the spin-out is then created and then sent out into the world on its own. Because it's come from within the university, there's a lot of links that remain between the university and the company itself. And um, we've been very fortunate to have very close links with Michelle and her team uh, and others that have been involved in, in the work. So there's data sharing agreements, there's licensing, there's IP, and there's also continuous improvement. So if we go and develop some very new, uh, advanced things with the work that we do, that can feed back into the university, into the research environment as well, to benefit the future research. So that gives you an overview of, of what a, a spin-out is. In terms of New Health itself, so New Health is, is an AI powered platform. Again, we're going to have to use certain buzzwords here, I'm afraid, but um, it is machine learning powered. Uh, it's really a platform for, for Parkinson's disease and for dementia. And the idea is that we want to try and help people remain healthy and independent at home by combine, combining remote monitoring and personalised care planning. And I'm going to unpick each bit of that in more detail. But before we go into exactly what we do, this is the, the team so far. So we were formed in January of this year, so we're very new, it's a very uh, you know, a new company, um, but we've quite rapidly expanded the team already. And I'll take you through a few of these people, there's a few familiar faces here I think. So there's, there's myself, so as Michelle said, so I'm a neurologist and I'm part of the management co-founding team with Caroline, who's the CEO. We've got Siddharth Arora, who's the lead data scientist as well, and a lot of the uh, research work from a machine learning perspective uh, was, was developed by him. And then we've got our uh, academic uh, co-founders, so we've got Michelle, who's uh, advising us, and a lot of the research work was based on her work. And we've got Masood Hussain as well, from a cognitive perspective. And then another notable person to, to mention is Sally Bromley as well, so she's our expert patient advisor, and her role is key in what we do to make sure that everything we develop really is useful and should be what we make for patients that end up using this. We've built a, a big development team at the moment, and this is just a, a, a small number of the people. We've actually recruited two more people with another two more people starting, so we're rapidly expanding. So to take you through what New Health does, so it is really about chronic condition management. So there are other chronic diseases, and diabetes is one of them, <coughs> Parkinson's disease is one of them. I'm going to take you through an example of um, a patient with diabetes and how that's managed uh, in the home environment and then compare that with Parkinson's disease so you can get a bit of an idea of what we're trying to achieve. So here on, the, on, on your left is, uh, is Fred and he's got diabetes and on the right we've got Kelly who's got Parkinson's disease. So if we look at Fred to start with and how his disease is managed when he's at home, 
The first thing is he can actually measure his diabetes. So he can do a simple finger prick test, and get a glucose recording, and then analyse that at home with a little device that will tell him what his sugar level is doing. And on the back of that, he can act on it. So he can either take insulin, change his diet, depending on what his sugar level shows. And then because you get lots of repeated measurements at home, over time you can start to plan and anticipate what the sugar levels are going to be, and then you can optimise your management. And that's done very well in conditions like diabetes. And there's more advanced uh, ways of measuring now with patches that you can place on the arm and continuously mo uh, measure sugar levels. So this is an example of how it's done well. And when it comes to Parkinson's disease, which is also a chronic condition, it's a bit more challenging here. And there's a number of reasons for that. Measuring in Parkinson's disease, as you've heard today, is quite difficult. Um, the way that we, we don't have a single blood test that can tell you how severe the condition is at that moment in time, and then what you can then, what medication you should then take. So measurement is difficult. At the moment, that's done really in a clinical basis. So when you see a, a neurologist or your doctor in the hospital, they will examine you, and that's the form of measurement that you get in terms of severity. And then they will use their expert knowledge to analyse you and come up with a plan for you. And that's really how it's done. So it requires you to physically come in and to see someone. They'll then act on that by prescribing medication, potentially. Um, and then in a few months' time or a number of months' time, they'll reassess you, and then they can decide, was the plan that was put in place the right one for you? And they'll make alterations. So this is quite a long process, and it can't really be done um, with patients in their own home. So what we want to do with New Health is actually try and digitise some of that and create this vir virtual outpatient Parkinson's care uh, platform. So in terms of measurements, what we're doing, instead of a blood test, and I think this has been mentioned earlier in the day, using the OPDC smartphone app, which we've now uh, translated uh, into, the, into New Health, you can do a number of assessments just using your smartphone. And smartphones these days now are remarkable devices. They've got tons of sensors that can measure movement, voice, motion, all sorts of different things. And we've developed software now that, with seven simple tests, is able to extract a lot of information and then send it in real time up to the cloud, where we've got machine learning algorithms as well, based on the research that was done at the university, that can then analyze that and send it straight back to the clinical team, who can then see that um, in the hospital while the patient is at home in real time. And then based on that information, they can then make more objective decisions and choices on medication, for example. And then because you've got repeated measurements again happening at home, you can then start to plan uh, in advance as well. And you can actually start to predict outcomes too, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So that gives you an overview of, of what we're trying to, to do with New Health. And as I've mentioned before, you've heard some great uh, talks today from the research that's been done at OPDC, and really this has come from within OPDC. And it's based on one of the longest, well the biggest longitudinal studies in, in REM sleep behaviour disorder and Parkinson's disease, led by Michelle, and then we've got Masood who's also done a lot of work in the cognitive neurology space as well. And it's coming out of uh, Oxford University, which has done pretty well in the rankings over the last 10 years, so you can hopefully have some confidence that this is based on quite solid data. So what can we do exactly? Um, so one of the challenges is, if you were to try and get a full objective understanding of how a patient is, you'd have to spend quite a lot of time doing a lot of clinical assessments, questionnaires, which could take you know, upwards of over an hour if you were trying to do this in a clinic. But unfortunately that isn't time that anyone really has in a clinic to be able to do it. So instead, using these seven assessments that you can do on the smartphone, it takes seven minutes to do and we can actually estimate a number of these clinical outcomes just from the smartphone recordings. So you can get objective measurements, all done remotely as well, or in the clinic, which can actually estimate a lot of different clinical scores. So not only can you estimate the scores now, but you can also predict clinical outcomes 18 months in advance. And again, this is based on the work that was done at OPDC. So in 18 months, based on the scores that you've got, you can actually uh, figure out the risk of a person having new falls, freezing problems, postural instability, cognitive impairment and actual functional problems as well, so difficulty doing hobbies or the need for help at home. So all of this stuff actually has more of a proactive uh, approach where you can start to prevent outcomes from happening. So if you know that someone's at high risk of fall, then actually maybe they need to see the physiotherapist earlier or the, or the falls prevention team earlier to prevent that from happening in the first place. And there are a number of um, benefits, both, both to the patient but also to the healthcare system. 
So because we've got um, the ability to objectively measure longitudinally and remotely, you can have improved medication titration. So that's good for both the patient and for the, the clinical team. You can identify needs earlier, which means you can match people to more appropriate care. So like I said before, if someone's at high risk of fall, maybe they need to see the physiotherapists earlier. And if you can do that, you proactively potentially can reduce that fall from happening in the future, which reduces emergency admissions as well. And at the moment, how it currently works, when you see uh, one of the clinical teams, so one of the multidisciplinary team, you may then go six months before you see the next person. So in that gap, patients will now have access to the app, and within that, they'll have educational resources which are tailored towards them, and also information that comes back to them. So it's not just data that's being extracted into a black box and they don't see anything. Some of this information will come back to the patient as well. And based on that, they can actually make changes to their lifestyle and actually act on the information that's coming back. From the clinician side as well, a lot of time is spent in the clinic trying to extract information from a patient in a very short period of time. Um, but instead of spending that time doing that, now people can focus on actually providing the right treatment because a lot of this is pre-populated by the data that's collected before the patient even walks in the door. So the clinician can actually get a better understanding of what's going on with the patient before they've even come to see you. There's less travel time, because a lot of this can be done remotely, and also potentially better utilisation of resources. So at the moment, patients will have fixed outpatient appointments every six months, for example, or every year, depending on where. Um, whereas some people might need to be seen more often, and some people less so. And you can use this kind of information to start to prioritise more appropriately when a person should be seen. So what does this all look like? Um, so as I said, we were formed in January of this year, and this has been extensively tested now over the last 10 years with, uh, with lots of patients, but since January we've been re really trying to redevelop um, the user uh, side of it and add additional features as well. So we've had a, a number of patients who've very kindly given up their time to come and work with us, um, specialist nurses, neurologists, researchers, GPs, really trying to figure out what are the key things that we need to build uh, into this. And recently as well, Parkinson's UK has allowed us to use their educational content within the app as well. So that's a really great resource that will be able to be delivered directly into the app now as well. So finally, future steps, uh, future and next steps. Um, I've told you a lot about the motor tests from, for Parkinson's here. And um, we've also got a number of cognitive assessments um, that we're now integrating into the platform as well. The next step will then be to also see how this can be beneficial for patients with dementia. Um, and at the moment we're working on developing a service evaluation where we can start to test this in the real world setting in the NHS to actually start to see how does this improve uh, the service that patients receive. Um, and very recently we've just been accepted in as one of the Johnson & Johnson group of, of companies um, and that's basically a big stamp of approval from J&J &J that says um, we are, to them, a potentially uh, big company that could be emerging in the future. So that's a very nice sort of stamp of approval from J&J. From &J. And then finally, um, focus groups. So really, one thing I'd just like to highlight is to, to get involved, because as I said, what we're trying to do is to make sure that what we build is actually useful for the people that it's designed for. And the only way really to do that is not just assume what people want, but actually get people involved from the very beginning on each aspect of this. And in a couple of weeks' time, we're organising another focus group to go through different elements uh, to make sure that what we're doing is the right thing. So if you're interested, we have a sign-up sheet at the back, or feel free to directly email me uh, and get involved. Thanks very much. Thank you.